Breaking the wind. Mutual aid is a guiding factor behind anarchist practice and an essential framework for understanding anarchist views on social organization more broadly. So, what is it exactly? Well, in its simplest form, mutual aid is a motivation at play anytime two or more people work together to solve a problem for the shared benefit of everyone involved. In other words, it means cooperation for the sake of the common good. Understood in this way, mutual aid is obviously not a new idea, nor is it exclusive to anarchists. In fact, the earliest human societies practiced mutual aid as a matter of survival, and to this day, there are countless examples of its logic found within the plant and animal kingdoms. To understand anarchists' specific embrace of mutual aid, we will need to go back over 100 years to the writings of the famous Russian anarchist Peter Kropotkin, who in addition to sporting one of the most prolific beards of all time, just so happened to be an accomplished zoologist and evolutionary biologist. Back in Kropotkin's day, the field of evolutionary biology was heavily dominated by the ideas of social Darwinists such as Thomas H. Huxley. By ruthlessly applying Charles Darwin's famous dictum, survival of the fittest, to human societies, Huxley and his peers had concluded that existing social hierarchies were the result of natural selection or competition between sovereign individuals and were thus an important and inevitable factor in human evolution. Not too surprisingly, these ideas were particularly popular among rich and politically powerful white men, as it provided them a pseudo-scientific justification for their privileged positions in society, in addition to providing a racist rationalization of the European colonization of Asia, Africa, and the Americas. Kropotkin attacked this conventional wisdom when in 1902 he published a book called Mutual Aid, a factor in evolution, in which he proved that there was something beyond blind, individual competition at work in evolution. Kropotkin demonstrated that species that were able to work together, or who formed symbiotic arrangements with other species based on mutual benefit, were able to better adapt to their environment and were granted a competitive edge over those species who didn't or couldn't. In today's metropolitan societies, people are socialized to see themselves as independent, self-sufficient individuals equipped with our own condos, bank accounts, smartphones, and Facebook profiles. However, this notion of human independence is a myth promoted by corporations and states seeking to mold us into atomized and easily controlled consumers concerned primarily with our own short-term well-being. The truth is that human beings are incredibly interdependent. In fact, that's the key to our success as a species. Do you ever spend time thinking about where the food you eat or the clothes you wear come from? What about the labor and materials that went into building your house or your car? Left to fend for ourselves without the comforts of civilization, few among us would survive a week, let alone be able to produce a fraction of the myriad commodities we consume every day. From the great pyramids commissioned by the pharaohs of ancient Egypt to today's global spanning production and supply chains, the primary function of the ruling class has always been to organize human activity, and everywhere that they have done so, they have relied on coercion. Under capitalism, this activity is organized through either direct violence or the internalized threat of starvation created by a system based on private ownership of wealth and property. Capitalism can inspire people to do amazing things, as long as there is a profit to be made. But in the absence of a profit motive, there are many important tasks that it will not and cannot ever accomplish from eradicating global poverty and preventable diseases to removing toxic plastics from the oceans. These monumental tasks require a change in the ethos that would connect us to one another and to the world that sustains us, a shift away from capitalism towards mutual aid. Glimpses of the anarchist ideal of mutual aid can be seen today in communities of open source software developers and in programmers coming up with new forms of encryption to thwart NSA surveillance. It can be seen in neighbors coming together to organize a daycare collective and in the aftermath of disasters such as Hurricanes Katrina and Sandy, when in the absence of state institutions, perfect strangers rush to one another's aid. It can be seen in the bravery of the White Helmets of Aleppo, who risk their lives to pull children from the collapsed ruins of buildings hit by Assad's barrel bombs. 
Imagine a world in which human activity was not organized on the basis of ceaseless competition over artificially scarce resources, but the pursuit of the satisfaction of human needs. And you will understand a vision of the world that anarchists seek to create.